we are continuing perfect perfect okay so basically you could know me for this waiting you could uh, really know me okay so uh, as I explained I work for quality Austria and uh, I'm also auditor and trainer there and practically we will continue with our presentation now not waiting anymore so let's just start from basics as a producer uh, we are responsible for products we are putting to market and in front of consumers meaning that we are responsible for any health risk connected to our product uh, we deal with this through the food safety system requirements defined by regulative and standards we implement and certify main requirements in all of them are traceability and process of recall withdrawal uh, and uh, using simple words traceability is knowing where each piece of our product finished for now it ends at retail but in future we will know exact home and this will be one more special topic I will make for Food Safety Fridays. So traceability includes also knowing where each ingredient came from and when suppliers and origin. This is all of course tracked with documentations, record or through some software system. And traceability is needed as primary step for next requirement and this is recall or withdrawal. Basically a food recall occurs when food uh, poses an immediate threat to public health and safety and needs to be removed from sale. Food recalls are usually initiated by the manufacturer or important and must be reported to uh, state and commonwealth government authorities. And this may be a trade or consumer level recall. And withdrawal is action taken to remove a food product from sale even if there is no public health and safety issue. This may be as a result of the product having a quality defect or as a precaution pending further investigation of a potential health risk. So withdrawals do not need to be notified to the authorities, for example. So our first question today is already set up in the pool. Have you ever had participation in real recall or withdrawal in your company? So if you can go to the pool, uh, Simon already set up for you. Simon? Yeah, yeah, I've done that, Vlad. Just in the meantime, while everyone's voting, your audio, we can hear it, but it's a bit, um, I don't know, uh, it's, it's a bit crackly, let's say. Um, is there anything you can do with your microphone? Is it a bit close or a bit too far away, or is there any interference? I don't know. I will, I will try it like this. So That seems better already, I think. Yeah, I just lowered the volume. Yeah, that's better. Right. Okay, so there's the poll. Can you see it? Have you ever participated in real recall or withdrawal in your company? Yes or no? Um, and it's about uh, 50, 60, 40 in f uh, saying no. So the majority have not participated in a real recall or withdrawal. Yeah, yeah. So we are practically familiar with the recalls and withdrawals from the let's say procedures or maybe we have performed some uh, simulations like mock recalls etc but don't worry on next uh, slide we are going to go through it and uh, practically you will uh, use these uh, slides today to adjust also your uh, procedures so let us continue okay so in this first slides I would like the, uh, that we start with standard requirement and here I included most common ones like ISO 22000, FSC 22000, uh, IFS, BRC or SQF for example and let's start from ISO 22000, 2018 so uh, the organization shall be able to ensure the time of withdrawal recall of lots of end uh, products that have been identified as potentially unsafe by appointing competent person having the authority. Simon, sorry, your sound is. I am sorry, it was my phone. Uh, having the authority to initial and carry out the withdrawal or the recall. So practically, there is uh, defined requirements in each uh, each chapter of the standards. And for the ISO 22000, it is said how we should deal with the product and it is said that withdrawn or recalled products and end products still in stock shall be secured or held under the control of the organization until they are managed in accordance with some other point. So actually 
when you look at the verification of process, it is also explained and they are saying that organization shall verify the implementation and effectiveness of the withdrawals recalls through the use of appropriate techniques, for example, mock withdrawals that we are going to talk also today, or recall practice, withdrawal recall, etc. Practically, for all documented information, you will have like some notifying relevant uh, interested parties and handling withdrawal recall products as well as products still on store. If you look at the FSSC, practically FSSC new version 5 that will be active from January 2020 uh, will actually cover totally ISO 22000-2018 saying that requirements there are practically same as uh, for uh, ISO 22000 and you should implement the same thing. IFS version, version uh, last version 6.1 is uh, also handling the recalls and withdrawals in the point 5.9 management of incidents and here when you look for uh, uh, IFS, it is a little bit stricter and saying that there is a documented procedure shall be defined for management of incidents and of potential emergency situations that impact food safety, legal, legal, legality and quality. And this procedure shall be implemented and maintained. This includes as a minimum the nomination and training of crisis team and alert contact lists, sources of legal advice, contacts, uh, availability, customer information, etc. But there is even a knockout question or the demand that there shall be an effective procedure for the withdrawal and recall of all products which ensures that the involved customers are informed as soon as possible and this procedure shall include a clear assignment of responsibilities. Also dealing with product is another chapter, management of non-conformities and non-conforming products. Uh, also verification of process, it says that withdrawal pro, uh, procedures shall be subject to regular internal testing based on hazard analysis and it should be performed at least once a year. So if you look at other standards like BRC or SQF, you can see in different chapters that it is also handling uh, a process of uh, recall and trace, uh, traceability included and also withdrawal. And it is all connected also with the handling of non-conforming products that are coming from these processes of recalls and withdrawals. And also it is said as a requirement that the verification process should be performed minimally once per year through some mock recall simulation, etc. Practically, demands and standards are, are really clear. But our next step is to design the process of recall withdrawal and this is done in the same way as for any other process through several aspects like regulation or organizational aspect or informational controlling and safety aspect. If we look at the regulation aspect, we need to explain what is done, when, how and why. Organizational aspect is something connected to organization, who is accomplishing which task and where. Informational aspect, again, sh uh, showing the information that is transferred and how the same information is transferred. Controlling aspect is the process reaching its targets. And safety aspect, who is authorized to do what within the process. If you apply or use all of these aspects, you will have defined your withdrawal recall process correctly and completely. So we will start from the first regulation aspect as a phase of construction, constructing the withdrawal or recall. So here we need to explain some common things. What is done, when, how and why. If we start from what is done, we need to think about which regulative in your country is defining recall process. What are the demands of this regulative? For example, we will have the regulative that is applying to our country, but we will have also the exporting country regulative. For example, if we are exporting to China or Russia, etc., we need to think about the recall procedures, recall processes, and demands of their regulative. I took, for example, the regulative from European Union. This is food safety law. And there are articles 19 and article 50 that are handling uh, detailly about this uh, recall and withdrawal process. And in article 19, it is said, if a food business operator considers or has reason to believe that food which 
it has imported, produced, processed, manufactured, or distributed is not in compliance with the food safety requirements, it shall immediately initiate procedure to withdraw the food in question from the market where the food has left the immediate control of that initial food business operator and inform the competent authorities thereof. Where the product may have reached the consumer, the operator shall effectively and accurately inform the consumer of the reason for its withdrawal and, if necessary, recall from consumers' products already supplied to them when other measures are not sufficient to achieve a high level of health protection, etc., etc. So if you look only in this Article 19, you will find lots of things you need to answer in defining your own procedure. More detailly, if you look at the Article 50, you will see that regarding the information, you will need to use the rapid alert system, meaning that member states shall immediately notify the Commission under the rapid alert system and any measure they adopt which is aimed at restricting the placing on the market or forcing the withdrawal from the market or the recall of food or feed in order to protect human health and uh, requiring rapid rapid actions. So this is the first step when, where you need to consider some regulative uh, demands and practically to see what needs to be done, when, mainly it is immediately, uh, how it should be done, here explaining, let's say, for example, rapid alert system and why you should do it and how fast it should be uh, performed. Next aspect is organizational aspect. So you are available of the demands of your standard, of your regulative, but now you need to organize your company in this way. So you will have to think about internal procedures and standards, responsibilities and resources that you need. When we talk about internal procedures and standards, we need to think about, is there already defined procedure? What was the last time procedure, or when was the last time procedure verified? What are the standard requirements? Maybe we had implemented ISO 22000 and now we are changing to BRC. There are a little bit strict rules that we need to comply with. So we need to change this procedure or write it if we do not have it yet. In this procedure, we need to think about some organizational aspects like responsibilities. And it will depend from the company size and employee number. For smaller companies, it could be only one employee or two employees really responsible for the process. But in bigger companies, of course, you will have to include departments. Of course, main responsibility will be on food safety team members and, of course, the top management that must be included in this. Sometimes you will have to think about also external responsibilities, maybe consultants, maybe some regulative authorities that you are going to include, maybe your suppliers or, or some big customers like retailers, etc. Regarding the resources, you need to think about the transport of recall withdrawal. Sometimes you will have your own transport, but in some cases your transport will be uh, like some service company that you need to already have defined uh, rules for the recall withdrawal. Also, storage area for non-conforming products. In some cases and some standard demands, it is said that you, you should have some storage area that is separated, that is marked as a area for non-conforming products. And in this case, you should think about this uh, resource. Also, destruction or rework of process. Did you think about it? What, what shall be done with uh, recalled products? Maybe they should, have, uh, they should be destroyed, destroyed or maybe they should be reworked. So this is something to think about. Of course, some communication elements and at the end documentation like records or forms. Here in communication, very important for you to remember is practically communication to regulative and certification body. Why I separated this? It is because sometimes you will have, like, if you have some specific standard implemented and certification body will ask from you to be informed about recall in, let's say, two or three days. So this is something that you need to check in your contract with the certification body and also uh, with the rules of uh, recall and withdrawal. 
Next is informational aspect. So here we need to think about which kind of information is transferred and how it is transferred. This is practically the flow of your uh, withdrawal recall process that maybe starts with the compliant. I just made this as an example. Maybe it start, starts with the compliant that comes from the customer in some writing form or by phone or by email. We have a sales department that is uh, that is responsible to receive this compliant and maybe to send it to quality department who will review, who will check some records from the production, who will check the process and include maybe production and warehouse. And from here, it will send additional customer info again through the sales department or in case that there is a recall need recall will start and here is just this simple informational aspect that you need to consider this informational aspect how the information is sent who will receive and respond to information and even you can uh, set up how fast this information will go through your flow four phase is controlling aspect. So as any other process, you shall need to have some controlling aspect of your process of recall and withdrawal. So if we check the standard alignment, meaning are all requirements fulfilled? Are there records available? Some process architecture, some process output measurement, you know, like when you perform the recall or mock recall, you need to take care about some measurements. Uh, was it f done in a proper way? Was it communicated fastly? Are records um, made in a good way? Also, governance, uh, process management decision-making or process metrics and performance also. Of course, you will have to put a controlling aspect on your methods and procedures. You know, after you perform a mock recall or simulation or real recall, you need to think about process design and modeling, maybe some process implementation and execution, some control and measurement, and of course, improvement and innovation. If we talk about controlling aspect that is uh, focused on communication during the withdrawal recall, we need to think about different communication aspects depending on the situation, like how will you communicate in case that uh, whether or not any disease or injuries have already occurred from the use of the product. Maybe there is just assessment of the degree of seriousness of the health hazard to which the population at risk would be exposed and assessment of the likelihood of occurrence of this hazard. So depending on all of this that you adjust, you will have the different communication. This is practically handled in your procedure of the withdrawal recall and you will include this controlling aspect, of course, in your procedure. Fifth aspect or the phase is practically safety aspect. This safety aspect is to make sure that your withdrawal recall will not affect uh, terribly on your company processes. So in this safety aspect, some measures need to be implemented and considered like, for example, production process. So in the time of the withdrawal recall, you will have a crisis situation. You know, all the company is practically in this crisis situation. And in this process, you will have a recall, uh, uh, you will have a recall uh, practically uh, products and these products you need to handle, you know. Then you will have the market in which you don't have enough products. So you will have to think how to fill in this gap. This comes the safety aspect when you need to have this production process to think about production time, to think about machine availability, and to think about time organization. Of course, all of this will affect your customer later customer satisfaction. So this is in the ending process. Think to, uh, about the time for job processing and customer satisfaction index that will be affected later on. Of course, evaluation process is something that needs to be implemented at any cost as a safety aspect, practically, to perform the mock uh, simulation, to measurements in process of recall and traceability, and of course, at the end, some more effectiveness. And last, 
And very important is, of course, administration process that needs to be set up as any safety aspect, meaning the computer availability, number of open positions, time for expense reports, and some qualified staff. Of course, you will need some additional training for your employees. From experience, we can say that there is a different level of recall withdrawal processing company. And these levels are highly connected with the expenses. So if we start with initial level, there is a company that has no structured process activities, steps are not implemented, no standard requirements or regulative considered or no. And this is first, first practically. The second is the awareness. And this awareness is if, if process exists in the organization and there are some planning activities have started for the definition of the subject, but real recall has not happened to the company and there are no records yet made. So this is company that is aware, the, maybe through regulative that there is some uh, recall processes, withdrawal processes, they heard about it, they are aware that it could happen, but actually they don't have anything developed, like they don't have a procedure, they don't have uh, strict responsibilities, and it is a very, very critical situation. Third level is defined level. So this company, for example, is a company that has a process that is, is defined, there is a procedure, and there are some forms already set up, and implementation is yet missing or ongoing, so this is in the process, and maybe one recall happened, but not followed as it is defined in the process. It was uh, terrible crisis situations in the whole company, responsibilities was all mixed. Uh, there were a high tension in the company, and this is practically the, the company level that is only defined and not yet fully uh, managed. The next level is practically the company which has the process that is implemented, people assigned, uh, communication to relevant, uh, relevant people done, training is also done, etc. So handled all the recalls and records are available and at the end it is only team responsibility. So uh, all the pressure is put on this one team that is defined and this one team is practically doing everything. For all of these four levels of the companies, you can see that some expenses could happen, you know, not handling the recall properly, not informing the, the regulatory bodies, having a lot of customer unsatisfied, having a bad influence on the market, and you could lose money if you are in these uh, four uh, first levels of your company regarding the withdrawal recall. If you are a company that is on a fifth level of excellence, this means that process is implemented department-wide, people from different departments understand everything, a continuous review and improvement process is implemented to exchange lessons learned and address required changes proactively. And also max simulation are done in defined intervals, let's say minimally once per year. In this case, if you're a company that's on this level, you will practically uh, not lose money in cases that something happens. Okay, so we set up additional poll for you. So we kindly ask you to respond to the same. What is the level of withdrawal recall process in your company? Are you on some uh, initial level, awareness, and etc.? Um, if you could type in the sidebar uh, your answer to one of those, just type in initial awareness, defined, defined managed or excellence. As unfortunately, the poll uh, has failed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, there we go. I thought it had failed, but it seems to have worked now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. C so defined, defined. Okay, someone is only managed. Yeah. Managed, nice. Defined. Okay, okay. 
if your level is defined, that is, this is all very nice. And uh, we will try to go through next uh, cases practically that I set up for you. And uh, maybe we can go from this, this defined to, to manage them, maybe to the excellence, you know. But of course, it depends now uh, from uh, also standards that you have implemented. Uh, some standards are a little bit uh, detailed and demanded, but some standards are a little bit flexible and, of course, uh, but the goal of the company uh, is, uh, of course, to have uh, this level of excellence and to be on a fifth level. Okay, so we are continuing. So, uh, I said for you some cases and checklists that you can use later directly from the presentation. So this first is my just personal view of recall process in small food production company model uh, from 10 to 50 employees. So if you if you are a small company model, this is something that I think would be good, uh, and this company could go to the excellence level. Let's say uh, that there is only defined one responsible person, person and replacement for this person in the process, and there is a decision uh, that should be communicated to the whole organization. You should make a list of regulatory requirements that needs to be covered, and also include uh, here uh, help by regulatory inspection and experts. You should make a list of contacts, all contacts. You should contact your top management to give you the list of suppliers, of customers, of experts and certification body. So you, you should have this list prepared and uh, verified, let's say, on, on, on some uh, time intervals to be assured that uh, all could be managed in time of crisis. You should make a list of standard requirements that needs to be covered. Uh, sometimes you will have some uh, requirements given by the customer. For example, your customer is a big retailer like Lidl or Carrefour or I don't know, and they give you some specific requirements regarding the uh, recall or the withdrawal. So this is something that you need to take uh, into consideration. You should define procedure for recall withdrawal and communicate the same to the organization and also follow steps of process definition, you know, like we said this uh, previous steps for process definition, it could be followed through the procedure and make you uh, make the, which will make you uh, define this procedure very easily. Also, you should perform changes of transport, warehouse and production for proper handling with non-conforming products. So I will uh, give you an example. For example, you have this transport that is uh, managed by external company, you are engaging this transport, and for now you have only the contract that is saying that the uh, company is responsible for the product during the transport. But this is not enough. You should revise your contract and also mention the recall and withdrawal procedures, the time that it should be performed, how it should be handled in cases of this um, recall uh, by, by your supplier, how the communication should go, who will be responsible for communication, etc. So this is the changes that you need to do for the transport, for the warehouse, and of course to the production to explain it to your employees. And at the end, perform simulation minimally once per year, and you should think about recording the time and also actions for improvements. So if you answered no to most of these questions, consider familiarizing yourself with the concepts and demands of recall withdrawal process once again, or please contact some external expert and consultant. Okay. Uh, in the case of some medium and large food production company model that is over 100 employees, we can say that the process uh, level should be excellent already, but if it's not, there are some simple steps that you can do it. Uh, first thing, because it is a big company, you should define a responsible team, and this is responsibilities per department and per, per process steps. Uh, also, make a decision and communicate it to the organization who are the, the responsible team. 
you should also make a list of uh, regulatory requirements that need to be covered and here include regulatory inspections but also agencies mainly in cases that you are doing to export practically uh, uh, to the to the uh, customers also make a list of contacts this is something similar make a list of standards uh, that needs to be covered define procedure and recall but here a little bit differently is to communicate the procedures to suppliers of services like transport storage export agencies etc and again perform simulation minimally once per year in cooperation with customers and supplier so this could be if you're a big company you can also engage your customer or some suppliers to perform for one ingredient even some uh, or one product recall and to include all of these companies so this could be like some uh, organized mock recall in different companies and cooperation with the customer and supplier this could be a really good good thing uh, if you answer more most of these questions, consider again familiarizing yourself with the concept and demands of recall withdrawal process engage some external consultants or uh, go to some additional trainings for a little bit detail okay so we already had some questions would you share at the end some guidelines and criteria for mock-up recall and we will of course mention it but uh, we will speak detailly but first from you please answer one more poll that is set up how often does your company perform simulation of recall withdrawal Okay, Simon, can you just check the... Yeah, it's there. People are voting. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay, once per year, this is mainly over 60 percentage. Oh, it is, yeah, over 60 percentage is once per year. And this is what I expected because, you know, standards are saying you should perform it minimally once per year and people are doing it. And uh, why they are doing it, it is because uh, it is time consuming, you need to include a lot of people or in some smaller companies people are doing it by themselves and uh, they are saying it is really terrible to perform some mock recall. But my friend, let, let's look what is next and if we look next practically that each recall withdrawal could be considered or is considered as crisis situation for company and accordingly there is differentiation of the same according to the time of detection so if you do not prepare your company you could have some issues so we have some let's say on your left side down some potential or destructive effect and all the crises are going through some four phases this is first phase is a potential company crisis then we have uh, practically second phase that is latent company crisis uh, then third phase is acute or manageable company crisis so the goal is that you finish it in third phase or before the third phase everything if you go to a fourth phase you will have not manageable company crisis and this could lead to some in intensity of uh, destructive effect and it could really uh, affect your company uh, you know being on the market so if you have your early detection requirement then there are possibilities that you stop potential company crisis in this first phase or even in this uh, second phase you can really stop it and finish it and manage it uh, even not going to a third phase or just entering into third phase and this means that you will have uh, none of the potential destructive effects and your company will uh, survive or see another day you will have no issues but if you have some you know uh, let's say usual identification potential is that we can see in any of these phases some uh, situation crisis and we can perform the recall this is why we need to be uh, prepared so if you see uh, on this slide all of these lines are cutting in one point and this point is practically this turning point and this turning point is very important important to remember is that each crisis has a turning point and depending on your company level this turning point is near or far from disappointing and with financial losses so for example 
few years ago in Serbia we had situation with baby food recall and situation was not handled timely and in a right way and uh, including bad handling with information distributed to newspapers. Although there were no consumers affected, story was so strong and negative that company had to close for some time and after reopening even had to completely change their brand name. So this turning point is where your money is. So keep the same very high meaning. You need to have very fast and quality response. To have this, next step is very desirable. And this next step is uh, simulation of recall or withdrawal or the mock recall. You can call it whatever you like. This is practically the verification of your defined procedure. Is it working or is it not working? But it is not just simple as that. You need to see if it's working, how effectively this procedure is working. So, practically, you need to think about a simulation that is done according to predefined procedure and requirements of implemented standard. Next thing is to when to perform it. Simulation is performed minimally once per year. And each time there is a change in system, process or product, as you remember, we should adjust our food safety system, HCCP analysis or any analysis. You can adjust it uh, every time you have some changes in the system, changes in the process, in the product. Why then we are not considering adjusting also the simulation or the process of withdrawal recall each time when we have some change in the, in the processes, some changes in the product, you know, if we change a supplier, if we change a customer, if we have a new customers in foreign countries, then our procedure should be really uh, verified and our procedure should be verified for the checking, you know? Okay, so uh, what should be considered? Maybe we can use some, uh, let's say, defined form log of simulation. This is, of course, very easy. Use of any available predefined forms downloaded is valuable. Uh, you can use some defined form or logo simulation. If you go to the uh, forum of uh, International Food Safety Quality Network, you will find uh, lots and lots of additional material that you can download and use it as uh, some form of logs. Also think about including traceability tests. So in each mock uh, withdrawal recall, you need to think about traceability tests to track two ingredients, all ingredients and two customers. Also to think about affected products. You know, it's not just one product. Maybe you had some issues with the ingredient that is in different products. Also, you need to define product for recall and think about different reasons for recall. You know, sometimes the reason would be something about microbiology. Sometimes it could be something about uh, product contact materials. Sometimes you can uh, make a mock recall with the issue of intentional contamination, like food defense, for example, you know? And through this mock recall, you can then also verify your food defense plan. For example, at the end, think about including all departments. Also, top management especially, uh, and if possible, suppliers and customers. This could be very valuable and uh, you can really check the time in these uh, issues. Also evaluate the effectiveness of the simulation and communicate the effectiveness and success. Don't, don't keep it to yourself. You communicate the effectiveness and success. You perform the lessons learned and the training to all employees that are responsible to make awareness that your maybe procedure are, uh, is not good, that time was affected with some bad decisions, etc. And this is something you need to perform and with this lessons learned and training you will go to the excellence level of your company. Regarding this evaluation of the effectiveness of simulation, this is something uh, to, to uh, use. Uh, you can also find it and this is practically how you can calculate your uh, mock recall effectiveness. So you can have the product production volume, uh, remaining stock volume for this product, distributed retention volume, other usage, and you have you can have the calculation of the percentage of mock recall effectiveness, 
and with this you will have the effectiveness of your mock recall. In cases that your mock recall is less than 100 percentage, you should outline the cause and indicate corrective action required, meaning that you will perform as your next step lessons learned and training and re-evaluation of your procedures existing. So, if you use any of available predefined forms, you can find it on the internet, of course. You download it and it is really valuable and you can find this evaluation of the effectiveness. So, this is something that you can use. Of course, you can use it also from this uh, presentation. Okay, so key things for you to remember is the traceability. Define it in a simple way of tracking traceability. When your traceability is defined in a very simple way, then you can perform your mock recall or real recall in timely manner, very fast and very organized. In case that your traceability uh, is really bad, then it is not possible that you perform the, the recall in timely manner. Think about the requirements of regulative, of customer, of implemented standards, of your exporting countries, etc. This is very important for you to, uh, to check it. Also think about the cycle time, perform time-limited MOOC recalls. So we have one question, uh, should recall be completed within four hours? You know, some of the standards like IFS is communicating to perform it in, in four hours. Some standards are saying two hours. For example, FSC is does not uh, give an input for uh, how fast you should perform the mock recall. But let's say for me personally, it should be done in two hours. This this would be perfect, you know. But this is something you should go to. Also, think about uh, record time for traceability simulations and always perform together mock re recall simulation and traceability simulation. Communication is very important to make clear responsibilities, include suppliers, regulatory inspection, customer, and also make clear what are you communicating and how. At the end, of course, we have documentation. You should make procedures simple and recording forms simpler and you should train uh, maybe uh, your employees and in these cases you know to be all ready uh, through the mock recall but also to be all ready uh, in cases of any real real recall okay so dear food safety friends if you enjoyed today's presentation we came to an end and we will start with the questions please join us on our uh, practical supply to training on August the 30th. So we will have great topic, lot of shared knowledge about supplier evaluation and supplier auditing process. And uh, practic practically, thank you all. And of course, you can check it in the office. I think uh, Simon already set up. So if you could stay, we can continue with your questions and to see what is problem okay Simon are you here yeah yeah I'm I'm here um, so we can end the presentation I have loaded that in the sidebar uh, I've actually made another mistake I've put September the 30th for oh the my God. That, that is affecting you, but... I know uh, <laughs> it's um, it's next Friday August the 30th the supplier auditor training okay so um, Let's pick up on some of the questions. Yes. So yes. Firstly, um, Joel, uh, in a recall committee, who is responsible, who are supposed to be part of it? Is it necessary to include all functional heads of the departments or just the manufacturing, uh, supply, distribution and sales? Well, Joel, it depends, of course, from the size of the company. This is the first thing. The second thing, practically, for me, the best thing would be that you include all the heads of the department or the at least one person responsible for some process. You know, you mentioned like functional heads like manufacturing, supply distribution and sales. But for example, you will have marketing. Maybe marketing is communicating to a newspapers, to a television, to, you know, and these persons are very valuable in case that you have some public recall. 
you know, marketing is someone who will communicate also to the newspapers the words that are going to be communicated. As I mentioned, this issue we had in uh, our country with this baby food production, and uh, the problem was that uh, practically they, uh, the communication was so bad with the newspapers that at the end this destroyed the company. So this is just one example. For me, the best thing would be that you include practically all company, uh, responsible persons from each department, and in this case, you will have awareness through the processes, and this is at the end very good. You know. Okay, thanks, Vladimir. Uh, Noel, how would export regulatory requirements apply to toll processes in event of a recall? I think a toll processor. I don't know if you're familiar. A toll pros processor is somebody who processes raw material or semi-finished goods for another company. Yes, yes. Yeah. It, it, will, it will, of course, affect the same thing. You know, you have the regulatory requirements. It depends uh, what are you producing, you know. But uh, let's say like this. If you have the final producer who is producing the final product with your ingredients, practically... And the issue is your ingredient, then it will affect this recall and the withdrawal or withdrawal will affect also recall withdrawal in your company. So this is practically where you should consider also regulative requirements uh, that is really affecting in this case. Okay, uh, next question, Bagyashri. Uh, the difference between mock recall and a real recall is different, of course. Yes, it is very different. You know, you you perform the mock recall uh, from reason to check uh, is your procedure um, uh, defined properly? Is it all according to the regulative? Uh, can all uh, be done uh, in timely manners, etc. And the real recall is very different. Then you you will know when you have a real recall in your company. It is like crisis situations, like everything is burning, everything is asking what is happening, what we will do, etc. If your procedures are not uh, defined in a good way. Okay, and uh, Joel. Is there a standard, an international standard lead time for product recall completion? Yeah, uh, actually, if you look at the standards, for example, I mentioned IFS. IFS is saying you should complete your uh, traceability check and your uh, procedure recall uh, mock simulation in four hours. Sometimes different standards, different certification body would say you finish it in two hours to check, uh, can you do it? For me personally, it is important that you as a company is uh, capable to perform the traceability check in four hours, to check where, uh, what is the root cause of the problem, and to inform all the customers or the retailers of the possible recall or withdrawal. So this is something that shows that you are as a company really capable in answering in one day uh, what should be done and that recall should be performed. So this is this is why they are using this defined time. But I don't think that there is some international lead uh, uh, time of product recall completion. You know, it's it depends from the company size, from the type of product, from the number of customers, from its different. Okay. Right, uh, Rock Shanara, what are the situations that could trigger recall? Well, you have a different situations that could trigger a recall, you know. Uh, sometimes it could be customer compliant. On one product you have one customer and then you check something, maybe it's not something, you know, terrible, but then you realize that there were some problem in the uh, process and uh, then you say, okay, this is an issue for us, maybe we could have some additional customer complaint, we should think about the recall. Uh, let's say, for example, you have a customer complaint on your, I don't know, some uh, uh, labeling issues, you know. Some of the customers will not know notice this labeling issue. 
But for you as a company, this is also a regulatory issue. So you should perform the recall, you should take this product, or withdraw it from the market, and then uh, change the label, for example. Or in some cases, you will have like 10,000 customer complaints coming in one time for poison, poisoning. This is really good time for a recall uh, of the product. Okay, Philomena, um, sometimes validity is so small than, than the product is consumed. What corrective action you can take? Uh, I don't understand that. Do you understand that question, Vlad? Uh, sometimes validity is so small that the product is consumed. Uh, well, actually, I don't understand. I think it is maybe con connected with the uh, uh, time that the product is on the market. And, right. You know, so, so yeah. You know, when you look at, at uh, I always compare European Union uh, regulative and America regulative, you know, because if companies, not just the regulative. And if you look at the Euro European Union companies, they would say, we produce the product in case that something happens, we uh, immediately recall it, we return it immediately, there's nothing that could affect the customer. But if you look at the American company, they would say, okay, let's readjust re uh, the situation to see uh, how much there is a product on the market. Okay, let's see uh, how many compliance can we expect. Can we uh, accept some, uh, I don't know, regulative fines? Do we have some legal uh, fines, for example, that the customer goes to the, to the you know, some advocacy. And then they calculate the risk of the product and then they sit and say, okay, shall we do the recall or maybe we shouldn't do the recall, depending on the money. You know, so it, it is a little bit different. For me, always do the recall. Don't, don't calculate it. No, it's... Okay. Um... Anna just mentioned that in poultry meat, they apply two hours for the recall. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. It's a fresh product. You don't have lots of shelf life. Uh, so, yeah. And Francis mentioned that Joel didn't mention quality as a function to be included in the recall. Um, yes, it could be also an issue. Not just that you will have some poisoning or something, you know, you can have just bad taste of the product or something like that, yeah. Yeah, uh, Robin Wallace, we perform our mock recall to the first distribution point. This could be the distri distributor. Uh, this we can do in two hours, but if we have to go all the way to the final customer, this can take one to two days. In your experience, is this acceptable to certification bodies like FSSC? No, it's not acceptable. That's it. Uh, in this case, you should, in, uh, when you perform your mock recall, uh, of course you, you should go to the, your first uh, distribution point. But next thing would be that you ask from your distributor to check all uh, customers or the endpoints where he distributed. You should know the, all, all the endpoints. Maybe you don't do it in your mock recall. Maybe you can perform the audit of your uh, distributor. And during the audit, you perform the mock recall together with them on their side. So that's it. But you should have the information. This is your product. Don't, don't forget that. Uh, okay. Can you clarify the difference between recall and withdrawal for Rushi Cash? If you go to the... I think third slide, you, you, will, uh, you will find the, the, the explanation, but practically, if you look at it, uh, let's say recall is practically something that you uh, recall the product and there, there is some issue that could affect people, uh, you know, uh, health, but uh, withdrawal is something that, and recall is mainly managed publicly. You need to say, it, you know, to the to the newspapers, to the television. We are performing the recall, and you heard about it. You know, the Mars bars recall. The uh, I don't know all kinds of things that you heard about the recall. But withdrawal is something that you realized could be an issue with the 
product, you realize it during the, the storage and you have some batches already distributed. And in this case, you will just call your as we talk, distributor, or you will call the retailer that you deliver, and you will withdraw the product to your company, and it will not go to further on the market. It is still on the on the shelves, let's say, not and not uh, did not come to final customer. Okay, thanks. Um, what percentage? Uh, <clears throat> What percentage of effectiveness in the recall would be considered as satisfactory? It depends from your company. I could say that uh, if it's higher than 85 percentage, it's, it's okay, it's satisfactory. Okay. Yeah. Um... But it depends from the type of product, from the company uh, objectives, from everything. Yeah. Okay. Catherine uh, Fuentes, is it advisable to implement a unique recall procedure for both for quality and safety issues? Yes, it is even advisable to implement a unique recall procedure and unique withdrawal procedure. So you have a different recall and withdrawal procedure. Sometimes it's one procedure, but the, the steps in each of these processes a little bit differently. And also you can... Uh, manage here that there are unique re uh, recall procedure for quality and for safety issues. In this case, you will have different communication uh, people, or you will have different responsibilities, uh, etc. So yes, it's it's okay. Okay. Um... Bagyashri has said to the earlier question that was a bit um, confusing. He has said maybe uh, it, it was about if the product has already been consumed, then what would be the corrective action? So if it's say short shelf life, it's already been consumed, then you realise it's an issue. Uh, yeah. What do you do then? <laughs> Call your legal department. Uh, I'm just kidding. Uh, well, actually, you, you will perform the recall and you will notify the customers that there could be an issue with the product and they could return the product to the place where they bought it and you should prepare some presents. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, Michelle... But this is, sorry, just, just one thing. And this is not a corrective action. You know, this is just the correction that you perform. Corrective action would be that you find the root cause, what what happened to your product, and you deal with the root cause. So, in future, you do not have that product that needs to be recalled comes to a customer. So this could this is a corrective action taken. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Michelle, most of our customers buy in bulk and then package under their own private labels. Ultimately, we'd be responsible for the costs involved with the actual recall. But would our mock recall require us to go all the way to the end users? I'm not sure we could even get that information from our customers. No, because you should uh, check the recall as uh, who is putting the product on the market. You know, if you are not the, the company that is putting the product on the market, you are not responsible anymore for the product. So this is how you you could uh, look at it, you know. If they are putting it, they are, they are practically uh, packing it under a uh, private label. They are responsible for the process of the production of the final product. They are responsible for putting the product on the market, so they are responsible for the, for the recall and to perform the mock recall in their company. For your mock recall, you will go only to to their site. You don't have to know the end, end customers. Okay, uh, just because we're well over time, I've loaded the certificate in the sidebar in case anybody wants to grab it and clear off. But for those of you who want to stay, uh, we'll just take a couple more questions then. Ahmed, uh, what about recall at fast food restaurants? <laughs> uh, I think this is not a real uh, recall, you know, it de depends. Fast food restaurant is something where uh, customers take uh, take food and eat it immediately. 
So you, in this case, you can have something like poisoning of the customer and they would come with the customer complaint. Then you will stop producing immediately uh, the product that they are complaining about and try to perform the traceability to see what is the issue, to find the ingredient. And in this case, you will notify the supplier uh, and stop, uh, stop production with this ingredient. So this is not a recall from the market, this is recall of this uh, ingredient to the supplier. Right, okay. Uh, I'm not sure, can you answer that one, Vladimir, Alisa? If yeah, there is a... That yeah. will be performed in a not ready to use recall product. Can a risk assessment be a tool used in determining recall status? Will be performed. Uh, I don't know, Alicia. Is, are, are you meaning that you uh, returned the ready-to-eat product and then you uh, cook it again to the boiling and then you return it to the market? It depends from the product. Maybe you can do it, but of course you should uh, take care of it, uh, some laboratory uh, tests and everything before you return it to the market. It is very uh, uh, risky products, ready to eat products. Yeah. If if it's this we are talking about, right? She's saying is is a recall mandatory if there's a kill step? Is a recall mandatory? Is, it it but, does not connect with that. Yeah. Uh, recall is only done in cases that you can have the pasteurization. You can have a lots of different uh, let's say kill steps. But uh, this does not uh, affect your recall, you know, maybe your kill step was not sufficient enough, you know, and then you have like microbiology issues and then you have to recall the product in case that there are some customer complaint or, or you know. Okay. Right, I think we've covered them all. I'll just see one more there from Sarah. What about recall of raw meat? What? I don't know. Yeah. It depends. It depends from the issue. You know, if you have some, uh, let's say we have now here in Serbia some Africa African plague of the pigs, something like that. And uh, let's say we have, uh, for example, we already distributed some of the meat uh, somewhere on the market, and it is a fresh meat. And then on the same day, you realize that there is this issue coming from the from the regulative. Of course, what will happen, you will perform the laboratory test of your product, uh, then you will check it, and of course you will perform the recall and destroy the product. It depends from the situation, it depends from the situation. You know? okay. But mainly your fresh meat, if, if fresh meat is only recalled because of the some quality issues maybe, maybe you can re recall it and rework it into some uh, other product. Okay, uh, I think f final question, uh, Vlad. Um, yes. My Linda, my company rent factory spaces to small manufacturers for production. Do we need a recall program for these companies? Who is putting the product on the market? This is important question. Uh, when you define who is putting the, the product on the market, that person is responsible for the recall process and uh, this person is responsible to define, or the company is responsible to define the recall program. Okay. Right, on that note, uh, I'd say uh, thank you very much, Vlad. Okay, uh, thank you all. It's been great. We've had a few technical issues, but we managed to get through, uh, yes, yes. thankfully. So thanks very much, Vladimir, and I'll see you thank next you week. Thank you all. Supplier on it, yeah. See you. Yeah.